Good morning. Mama Mukami, good morning. You are well in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for finding time to be in the house of the Lord this great, wonderful morning. And I am sure the Lord will never gather Israel in vain. He will never gather Jacob in vain. And so he has not gathered us in vain. One thing that I will urge us, let's be praying for our services. This is the service that is made to minister to us, is made to minister to you. You can imagine if you have not prayed for me and I come here. Pray that your expectations may be met. Of all the ministers who will stand on the altar, they are men in the like manner as you. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray that God may help them, stand with them, give them the grace that is needed to minister to you. In Jesus' mighty name. And you can be sure. As we engage in the place of prayer, we will come in this place and no one of us will be disappointed. None of us will be disappointed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord again. You are well this morning. Myself, I'm well. And my heart is well. As Mama Beatrice says, my heart is well. And we thank God for this opportunity again to receive from him, to hear from him in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to stand here and share his word, share that which he has for his people at such a time. I'm grateful, I'm honored to our Reverend Joseph Mwangi and Pastor Jane, our mom, who is present today for this opportunity. I don't take it for granted every time I find myself here. It's an honor and a moment that I feel it's a moment to be humble and give God the glory. Thank you to all of you who are seated here this morning to hear what the Lord is saying. You did not say that, uh, Nimetosha, you came again to drink again. May you drink until you overflow in the presence of the Lord. Today, by the grace of God, allow me to share a topic under uh, what we have been pursuing in the week of prayer and fasting running back to our place and dwelling in the secret place. Those who have missed those days, they have been great days, and we thank God. They have been days of impact. They have been days of impartation where we have caught that fire of running back to our place, the place of communion with God, the place of fellowship with our maker in Jesus' mighty name. And under that topic, I will be talking about let go. When you have found yourself in that secret place, you let God. You let God be in charge. You let God handle your case. Praise the Lord. Your task is to run and go to that place. Your task is to go and dwell. Then let God. And that is what we'll be handling today by the grace of God. I know he will minister powerfully to us about allowing God to be God in the secret place. It's not a place where we will go and pump ourselves that necessity. It's a place of letting God. It's a place of letting God. I know as we are getting there, men of us, men of you, God will lift you in the place of prayer, in the place of word. But it's a place, again, that we need to remember. It's a place of letting God above what you'll become as you dwell there. It's a place of letting God handle everything. Praise the Lord. We'll be reading different scriptures by the grace of God. And we'll be able to see that which the Lord has in store for us in this day. You can first give us Psalms number 68, 1 to 5. Psalms 68. Psalm 68. We are talking about running back to the secret place, making the secret place our home, our habitation, making the secret place the place of our accommodation. That is what we have been talking about on Monday, Tuesday, and I believe the other ministers who came after me, they also tackled on 
the secret place. And when we get to that place, it's a place of allowing God to be God. It's a place of allowing God to be in charge and be over all. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who ate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Let the wicked perish at the presence of the Lord. But let the righteous be glad. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Let them rejoice in his presence. Let them rejoice in the secret place. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Praise the Lord. We have seen some truths about ourselves, about our conduct when we get into the secret place. It's not a place of crying anymore. We say it is a place of rest. So, as he handles your enemies, as he has just said, you have your place. Number four says, let them sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him. Who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Number five, a father of the fatherless at the secret place. This is made a reality. At the secret place. This is made a reality. A father of the fatherless. You are able to experience that. A defender of widows. Is God in his holy habitation. Is God in the dwelling place. Is God in the secret place. A father to the fatherless. Husband to the widow. You might be fatherless. But to experience that God's love and fatherhood, you are called to the secret place. Someone might be a widow, but to experience it, God is calling us to step and get into the secret place, the dwelling place. You can give us Psalm 91, and we'll be able to read the entire psalm. By the grace of God. The scripture says. He who dwells in the secret place. Of the most high. Shall abide. Under the shadow of the almighty. I will say. Of the Lord. He is my refuge. And my fortress. My God. In him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver. You from the snare of the fowler, And from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays west at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. From verse 8 we read together, one, two, three. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is even most I, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Twelve. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall tremble underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high 
because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. That is 92. We are done. Take us to the last verse that is in 91. Yes, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. These are things, promises that God is giving to them that are running back and choosing to dwell in the secret place, the place of communion and the place of fellowship with their father. We say it's a place where your submission is called upon so that you can dwell because he is the only king at that place. We don't have two kings there. Christ Jesus is the only king in that place. A recap just for us who have not been able to make it to our teachings. I just recap something that we shared on Monday and Tuesday in our teachings about running back to the secret place and making the secret place our home, our habitation, and our safe place. We say the secret place is a place of submission and place of intimacy with God. It's a place of submission. You are expected to go with a heart of submission, a heart of humility before your king. And I believe as we came today, because we came to fellowship, we came to communion with our God, that heart is upon us. That heart is what we are carrying with us. Again, we agree it's a place of communion and fellowship is a place of refuge and rest. The secret place is a place of refuge and rest. That's why we are saying at the secret place, you let God. You let God. You allow him to do that which concerns you. The almighty God reigns at the secret place. You can give us verse number one and two of that Psalm 91. At the secret place, the almighty God reigns. It is him who reigns at the secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the most, I shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Anyone who gets themselves into the secret place, they are called to abide under, not over. The King Jesus is over all. He is the king. He is the one who reigns at the secret place. So it's a place we are called to go in brokenness. It's a place we are called to go in humility. Praise the Lord. It's a place where the almighty God reigns. At the secret place, the name of the Lord is highly exalted. At the secret place, the name of the Lord is highly exalted. We'll be able to see what happens when that name is exalted. At the secret place, the name of the Lord is highly exalted above every other name. And you can be sure, he will not reign where he is not exalted. He will not reign at that life, at that art, where he is not exalted. And that's why we are making a prayer that we are exalting him as the king even of our services. He will reign where he is exalted. Praise the Lord. He reigns in our praises if they are made to exalt him. Kama ni zetu zagusikia vizuri, it's about us. If we worship here just to feel good, it's about us. He will reign over our worship if he is the main God who is being exalted. If he is the one who is being lifted. He will reign over our gatherings over our services, if we came with that aim of lifting him and only him. Praise the Lord. At the secret place, God is your defender. God is your defender. When you get in the secret place, God becomes your defender. You can give us Proverbs 18.10. God becomes your defender. And we are here just talking and asking ourselves, 
if he defends them who are in the secret place, who are in communion and fellowship with him, what about those who are out of that fellowship? He is your defender if you are the secret place where his name is lifted. The scripture says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous. The dwellers of the secret place, them who have communion with him, run to it and are safe. Run to it and are defended of. They are covered. The scripture has spoken to us that they shall abide under his shadow. They will be covered under his wings. Those who are the secret place. We say God is everywhere. But I believe he is not everywhere covering everyone. Praise the Lord. The scripture have said that the righteous, when they run to him, the dwellers of the secret place, they are safe. They obtain safety at the secret place. Again, at the secret place, we agree God is our adventure. God is our avenger. He promises to take care of your enemies. You can give us from verse number 7. God promises to take care of our enemies as we dwell at the secret place. He is our avenger. Psalm 91. God promises to be our avenger. To defend us and to be our avenger. The scripture says a thousand when you are at the secret place, when you have chosen to dwell, a thousand may fall at your side. May fall. And sometimes they may not. The word is may. May fall at your side. And 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. This is the promise to them who have chosen to run back and dwell at the secret place. A thousand will gather themselves. Ten thousands at your right hand. But be promised. Be assured. As you continue dwelling at the secret place. They shall not come near you. Give us number eight. Only with your eyes shall you look. Only with your eyes. You are not called to stand against them as they arise. You are called to open your eyes. You are called to open your eyes and see the reward of the wicked. You are not called to stand and fight against them as they are fighting you. You are called to open your eyes in faithfulness and see the reward of the wicked. It's so sweet to be at the secret place. Where chairman, you don't have to fight. Nikufungua tu macho. Uone vile wananya unyo. Uone vile mungu anadil na wao. At the secret place, God is our avenger. He defends us, he avenges for us and on our behalf. Today, we add another truth concerning the secret place. And we say, at the secret place, you let God. At the secret place, my brother John, you let God. You have chosen to be a person who dwells at the secret place. It's a moment of letting God. It's a moment of admitting God now to take over. Of allowing God. Opening your doors for God to take over. At the secret place. It's a moment. It's a place of letting God. Church is not enough to know the possibilities that God has concerning the secret place. We have just known that he will defend us. We have just known that he will avenge on our behalf. But it is not enough to know that. We have to let him do exactly what he has said. We have to allow him. We have to create an atmosphere where he feels, I am in charge in this place. I am in charge over this life. I am in charge over everything that concerns this family. Now I can act on their behalf. Now I can defend them. There is nothing that limits me from avenging on their behalf. It's not enough to know what God has for us as we dwell in the secret place. 
we have to come to a point of now transferring those promises, those benefits of the secret place unto reality. Unto reality. And that is the moment of letting God, of having that full confidence in God that he will do. That which he has promised in his word, as I dwell at the secret place, he is not about to fail. I let him, I let him, I let him. Those who have been raised from backgrounds where at some points before you knew Christ, you consulted your forefathers or parents, consulted the witchcraft, consulted every other channel to seek for help. It's a time where God has chosen you to be a secret place dweller. Now you don't depend on those kind of help anymore. It's a moment of letting God. There has been other gods in my life. There has been other gods that have been charged over my life. That have been driving me into some directions. But where I have come now and today is a moment of transferring my faith. Of disagreeing with every force that has been ruling over my life. And now letting God be in charge and now rule. If you had sought such kind of God for safety, now you trust God for safety. And you believe he will surely give you safety. A place of letting God. It's a place of now transferring what you know about the promises of God into reality. Letting God. Letting God. Sometimes we know so much. We pray with so much scriptures. But how many turn to be a reality? How many of the scriptures that we profess in our prayers turn to be a reality? I know we can give some space to say it's not yet time. But I will also say some of us, we don't fully believe that God can do that. We don't fully agree that in this time, God can turn around everything in my favor. You still feel I need to give God more time. That is not a place of letting God. You need to come to that point of saying, God, even if it's now, I know you are able to do. Mary, did I not tell you? Even now, it is possible. Lazarus can be alive. Even now. Mary, let God. Let Jesus, even now. A place of letting God. It's a place of now transferring what you know about God and allowing him to make that which you know a reality. A reality in your life. And I believe that is where we are as a church of Jesus Christ. We have believed God for miracles. It's a time to let God do the miracles. We have believed God to raise the dead. It's a time we allow him. There has been some limitations in our thoughts and even in our faith. I don't know whether he can do it. I am not sure whether he can do it. What if he will not do it? It's a time now to close your eyes against those voices and let God. Let God. Let God. Let God. The scripture says in Hebrews, you can give us Hebrews 11.6, without faith it is impossible to please God because this is my concentration. Because anyone who comes to him must believe. Anyone who comes to him. Anyone who runs to the secret place. Anyone who chooses to dwell at the secret place must believe. Must believe. Must let God. Must agree. Us who has chosen to run back and to stay at the secret place. It's a moment of I must believe in God. I must believe that he exists first. I must believe that he exists and that he rewards. Whatever he says, he acts upon it. He rewards who? Those who honestly seek him. Those who honestly stay at the secret place. He rewards them. This is my faith. This is my confession. One thing I know, those who dwell at the secret place, the Lord is out to do exactly what he has promised them. 
is out to fulfill every promise and benefit he has proclaimed concerning our lives, concerning them that dwells at the secret place. We are the place of letting God. Letting God. He said that those who come in the secret place, in his presence, must believe. My work is to believe. My work is to believe. And I believe. Why do I believe? Because the scriptures have said, he rewards them. He rewards them. He rewards them. He gives them benefits. Them that stays at the secret place. And those benefits we have seen them. A thousands shall gather before you. At your right hand. Right hand. Ten thousands shall also gather. But only with your open eyes will you see the reward. I'm only waiting to see the rewards. I don't know how you will do it. I have let him do that which he is out to do. That which he has promised. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. And today I say he rewards. With those benefits that we have read in Psalm 91. That them who dwelt at the secret place, they shall abide. I believe I will abide under his shadow. I will be covered under his feathers. No evil shall come my way. Indeed, he will deliver me. I let him do that. I let him deliver me. I'm tired of helping myself. I'm tired of avenging on myself. I let God. I let God. He who dwells at the secret place must admit and agree that God will do exactly what he has promised and allow him to do it. Ephesians 3.20 tells us something concerning the Lord that we are coming unto. The secret place is the presence of the Almighty God. And this is where we are coming unto, in the presence of our Father. And Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him, and I will add, we have come to him. Now we have come to him. Who is able? The secret place we have come into is unto him. Is unto him. Who is able to do exceeding. Let's read it together. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all that we ask or think. According to the power that works in you and in me. That is the Lord we are approaching in the secret place. Let him. Let God. He is able to do exceedingly above. And you know that that which you can ask is according to the scriptures, is according to what he has said, is according to the promises, but he said he will do above even what you know, what you can think of. He is out to do. Let God judge. Let God. At the secret place we have come unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us scripture challenges us that God is out to do what we have not imagined dwellers of the secret place the scriptures challenges us that God is out to do more than what you can imagine. More than what we can ask or think of. Why not let him? Why not let him? Why not give him that space to do that which he has for us? In the book of Mark, chapter number 11, 24, the scripture tells us, therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, whatever you ask in secret place, believe. Agree. Whatever you ask in the secret place, just let God. You have asked, let God. Believe. Agree. Allow God that you have received it. Let God. Allow God and agree that you have received it. 
and it is yours it is yours if you let god it is yours if you let god isaiah 55:10 i don't know why the scriptures that god gave me are also connecting the scriptures that we are praying with the scriptures that servants of god are prayed with this morning but i know is out to do something and the secret place we are saying is a place of letting god Isaiah 55:10 the scripture says for as the, the rains the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater praise the lord see how much god is determined to go after that which he says See how much God is determined to do that which he has said concerning them that comes and dwells at the secret place. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, he will not send his word in vain. It's how to do something. Whatever he has said, he is how to do something about it that analogy and comparison of how rain comes down to the ground and by the time you check the entire ground is wet god is out to make sure that every word that he has spoken brings difference in your life brings change in your life god is so much determined to that point he says as the rains comes down. You know how the rains comes down? You have observed that? Now every word that I speak over your life every word that I speak over your life will not return to me without accomplishing that which I had sent it to do. You can give us the next verse. So shall my word, so shall be my word, so shall be Psalms 91. So shall be Psalms 91. So my word shall be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish. It's my prayer. As we dwell at the secret place, whatever benefits whatever promises God has given concerning them that dwells at the secret place will not return to him void. Will not return to him void. God is like he's just making a vow. It's up to you. I'm out to act as per my word. Church, it's up to us to let God do that which he has vowed to do. That which he has promised to do. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. It shall prosper. It shall prosper. As the rain comes down, there is food. Let there be an evidence over your life that the word of God was sent your way and you allowed it to manifest in Jesus Christ mighty name that word as we allow him shall fulfill that which he has sent it to do we need to let god do exactly as he has promised god is so much determined to go after every word that he speaks but what happens sometimes we don't get the results that god intends why because we don't give the word of God the welcome that it deserves. Sometimes maybe we are used to the word. We read the word and it's normal to us. But we have to come to a point of now reading the word. Having it in our heart and allowing it. Creating an atmosphere where that word can manifest the intended purpose of God. Praise the Lord. We have to let God. We have to let his word. 
if when the rain comes down, the ground agrees to be wet and to give forth a seed to the sower and a bread to the eater, then we need to allow the word of God do that which he has sent it to do. I had said that today we pray even with scriptures, but sometimes you wonder, even the scriptures that you prayed with so many years ago have not yielded anything. Maybe it's because you have not let God act upon his word. Let God. Allow him. We'll be seen how to let God manifest his word. We must come to a point where we have agreed that our life is totally dependent on God's word. Our nation is totally dependent on God's word. And I believe we are there now. Where we try to look unto east to west, where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. And now we need to let his word work for us. We need to take God's word. Not as a plan B for us. And I would say as a nation, that is what most of time and in many cases we do. We first run to our politicians. We first run to ourselves. We do what we can do. Like your man and your tunarudi kwa mungu. When it's hard. Ayendi na and your tunarudi kwa mungu. We need to develop an attitude that says God first. Before we seek any other counsel, what is God saying? What is God saying? God needs to be our plan A to Z. Every other plan can fall just under the plan of God. We need to let God even work on this nation. How to let God? How to let God? How to let God? And number one, as a nation, as a church, as believers who have chosen to dwell at the secret place so that we may be able to see the realization of the word of God, of what God has promised. We need to befriend God's word. We need to befriend God's word. Let's be friends of God's word. We can only know what he says concerning us through his word. Through what his servant says, we need to become friends of God's word. People who want to hear, what is God saying? A nation that is asking, what is God saying? Yes, there has been so many voices, but what is the voice of God? What is the voice of God? The word of God is a believer's tool. It's a believer's tool at the secret place. The word of God is a believer's tool. It's a tool that will help you stay in the presence of the Lord. You can give us Psalm 119, 133. The word of God is a tool. It will help you. It will preserve you in the presence of the Lord. Where you can hear him clearly. And this is one of the ways of letting God befriend his word. Because it is a tool that will keep you in the place where you can hear him. It's a tool that will give you direction and covering from every kind of distraction. Sorry, it's Psalms 119, 133. 119, 133. Sorry for that. It's a tool that will help you not be distracted. The word of God. The scripture says, direct my steps by your word. Direct my steps. Order my steps your word. Your word will direct me, will lead me to the right way. As a church that has chosen to dwell at the secret place and we are not planning to leave end time, this is what will sustain us there. The word of God will alter our steps not to leave the secret place, not to leave the presence of the Lord where we can hear him for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, and for our nation. And let no iniquity have dominion over me. The word of God will preserve you against every distraction that is out to rob you out of his presence. The word of God. 
befriend the word of God. This is the way to let him continuously minister to you. Continuously speak to you. Continuously help you stay at the secret place. And number two, have faith in the scriptures. Have faith in the scriptures. This is a way to let God act on your behalf. He has said, you will only see with your eyes the reward of the wicked. When a thousand rises, ten thousand rises at your right hand, your eyes will only see the reward of the wicked. Have faith in what God says. If you don't have faith, I think your eyes will see you fail. Will see you get defeated. But have faith in the scriptures is a way of letting God. When you have faith in the scriptures, you are telling God, now move and act. I agree with what you have spoken. Move and act. I welcome you to move and act in my life. Have faith in the scriptures. Believe that the word of God is able to handle every challenge that comes your way. Agree with God. Your word is enough for me. Your word is enough for what is facing me. Your word is enough for what is facing my family. As a nation, we need to come to a place where we are saying, your word, God, is enough for us, even in this time. Believe in the scriptures. What God says concerning your situation. Believe. At the secret place, he has said, he will surely deliver you. He will surely deliver you. Believe in the scriptures. It's a way to let God surely deliver you. It's a way to allow him deliver you. In Matthew chapter number 4, verse 1 to 11, we see Jesus being tested in the wilderness. And just imagine, where is he being tested from? In the presence of the Lord. In the secret place. Church in the secret place. As we abide in the secret place, we will be tested. We will be tested. But what will make us emerge victorious is our faith in the scriptures. That even in this test, the word of God is able, is powerful to save me. And then you will move ahead to proclaim what is written about you. To proclaim what God says about you. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He will put angels in charge to hold you. I believe Jesus had this in his heart strongly. That as I confess these scriptures, I don't have them only in mind. I have allowed God. I have let God manifest what he has said. Allow God by having faith in his scriptures. Hold on scriptures. What else will, this, will save us other than the, what God has said? What else? What else? Sometimes, tukiwa kwa mat, na kisanga ifanyike kidogo, the first name you hear being proclaimed is the name of Jesus. Even unto unbelievers, we just get to Jesus. Have faith that he is able. His word is able to save you. Jesus was tempted. He was tested, but he gained victory over Satan by the faith he had in the words of his father. By the faith he had in the proclaimed word from the mouth of his father. That is how he overcame. Church, to let God act on our behalf, to let God give us victory, we have to hold strongly in what he has said. If he said he will defend you, let them arise. And for you just to open your eyes and to see the reward of the wicked. To see the reward of the wicked. Because you have faith in the scriptures. Let God, by having faith in the scriptures, in Jesus' name. When you are tried, it is the time to allow the manifestation of scriptures. When you are tried. God is giving you an opportunity to allow him act on your behalf. He's giving you an opportunity to let him go, to let him go out and manifest as God. Trials 
I will say, and challenges are opportunities for us to let God show himself mighty and again show himself true to his word. Challenges that we face is an opportunity to let God to show himself true to his word. To show himself true to that which he has spoken. Will you deny him that opportunity? To prove to the world that whatever he has spoken is true. And he is able to do exactly that which he has said. And this is done by confession and faith. Confession and faith. Confess it and have faith. Omba na wamini. Omba na wamini. Usiambie tu mungu ulisema utani deliver. And again you still have doubts. Kwa sababu ya mechelewa, unaona atachelewa zaidi. Even when you feel the matter has delayed, let God. Let God. Number three, trust in the love of God for you. Trust in the love of God for you. This is a way of letting God act on your behalf. As a secret place dweller, as a person who has chosen to dwell in the secret place and in the presence of the Lord. This is your work. Have faith in the love that God has for you. Let the love of God that he has for you cover your life. Allow the love of God to cover your life. Agree with the love of God. Place yourself under his love. Place yourself. Declare that I am under the love of God. You can imagine if he gave out his only begotten son because of love, what is it that he cannot do for you? What is it that he cannot do for you? When you feel unstable, just remember that. He has done the best thing. He has done the highest kind of sacrifice for you because he loves you. Have faith in his love. What else do you want to know that he loves you? To know that his love can cover and stand for you. What else do you want to see? He has already given out his son on your behalf. What kind of love ambao inapita hapo? Our faith in God's love. If he can give his only begotten son, I think we need to let him Cover us with this love. Cover us. He means it when he says he will be your deliverer. He will be your avenger. As the arrows and darts of the enemy are being thrown your way, hide yourself and let the love of God cover you. As voices arise against you, against your family, as storms and waves arise against you, you at your workplace, at your business place. Just remember how much he loves you. Will he let you suffer this one? Just remember that. And cover yourself. Let the love of God cover you. Preserve you. Trust in God's love to cover you. Even when you are eat by arrows, sometimes I will say God is not the problem. Wakati tumepatikana, God is not the problem. At some point, we didn't believe fully in his love. We didn't know that he can rescue us from such experience. Allow God's love to be your shield. As you transition into different levels of life, allow God's love. We have been called in the secret place, not for a day, not for a week, not for a month. It's a place where we are going to grow. We are going to move from one level to another. But we need to allow, let the love of God cover us even as we rise. Even as we move to the next steps. Allow the love of God safeguard us on this journey of staying at the secret place. You can give us Jude 1.21. Jude chapter number 1. Verse 21. Let the love of God. Have faith 
in the love of God. The book of Jude, chapter number 1, verse 21. The scripture says, keep yourself, yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourself. Secure yourself. Secure yourself. Hide yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourself there. Till eternity comes, keep yourself. The love of God will give you security unto eternity. Will guard you. Will walk by your side. If you let him. If you let him. Till eternity. And number four and the last one for now. Keep the law of God. To let God work on your behalf. Arise on your behalf. Learn to keep his laws. Learn to keep his commands. You can give us John 15.10. John 15.10. The word of God is your safety. The word of God is your safety. The law of God is your safety. Wherever the law of God commands you to be, just know there is safety in that place. Wherever God will direct you to go, you are covered. Keep the law. Embrace the law. Embrace what God tells you. And then, you can be sure that you're safe. You can be sure that you're secure. The scripture says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That love will always be working for you. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. As you keep God's command, he will cover you with his love. You have to keep the safety orders of your commander. As an army, when you go out, there are safety commands that you're given. And if you don't keep them, then you're not safe. You're exposed. We have to let God by keeping the safety commands that he gives us. The kind of commands that God gives unto us is for our safety. That we may be able to march unto eternity. The commands provides a pathway for us to eternity. A safe pathway. A safe habitation that will take us to eternity. We let God, by keeping his commands, they will work for us. They will give us safety. They will secure our lives. Before eternity, there are many zones you need to step on. You need the security of God. You need the love of God to cover you. As you work, as you rise in the place of your work, you need the security of God. That security of God is in his word, is in keeping his word. Church, let's allow God. We have heard his word. The scriptures have been preached to us, but it's a high time as men and women who have chosen to dwell at the secret place, we allow those scriptures work. We allow those scriptures begin to manifest. We allow those scriptures begin to bring forth fruits. We allow the promises of God, every benefit that he has spoken to his children, begin to be realized. And we have said it's by befriending the word of God. We let God do all that by befriending his word. Becoming friends of his word. That is where everything that concerns us is hidden. Again, we let God by having faith in the scriptures. Use the word of God to speak over your situations and have faith in it. Again, trusting in the love of God. We let him. When he is one of our faith towards his love, he acts. And that's why when you expressed your faith towards him, when you heard the gospel, he made you a son. His love began to work for you. His love began to give you safety, began to cover you. Again, we keep the law of God for our safety. For our safety again in the secret place, let's keep the law of God. We can be standing in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name.
end. Just be making that prayer that God, I have heard of you. I have heard of your word. As you stand, just be making that prayer. You have not just heard the word of God today. You have been hearing the word of God. And you know to what extent the word of God has worked for you. You can be honest with yourself. So many scriptures that you have professed, you have declared, you know how much has worked for you. You know how much has not worked for you. And just be in the presence of the Lord telling God, could it be because I have not fully befriended your word? Could it be because I don't really agree with your word? I have not let you do that which you have spoken concerning me. Could it be because I've not given you away, I've not admitted, I've not welcomed your word to do all that is within it and all that has been spoken about it, oh God. Father, help me. Let that be your prayer. Help me befriend your word to a place I have full trust, complete trust that your word will work for me. In your word, there is everything that I need. In your word, there is everything that my family, my children, my community needs. I let your word, I let your word occur. Could it be because my faith has been so little? Sometimes I've doubted the scriptures. Sometimes I've said that they, the scriptures worked in those days, but today I don't think it can work. Lord, I want to be in a position where I let all that you have spoken in your only scriptures to manifest for me. I have faith. I've come in the secret place. And Lord, help my faith rise to see every scripture, every promise, every benefit of them towards them that have communion with you come my way. Manifest in my life. Manifest in everything that concerns me. Father, help me to trust in your love. Help me to trust in your love. Help me to trust in your love. The scripture have told me that the love of God is my safety, is my security even unto eternity. Father, in this journey, I need your love. I express my faith towards your love. My family needs the covering of your love. My business needs the covering of your love. My relatives my children, our church, our ministry needs the covering of your love. If you gave your son out just for us, what is it that you cannot do out of love? What is it that you cannot do because you love us? Father, we express our love, our faith towards your love. And again, we pray, oh God, help us keep your law. Help us Keep your word. Help us keep your word. Help us keep your word. Father, in this day, we let you. We let you be God. We let you act as God. We allow you. We admit you. We welcome you to manifest as God. Over that which you have spoken. Concerning us, concerning our lives, concerning this ministry. Be God. Be God. Even unto our online followers, Father, we allow you. Be God. Be God. Be God. And to that which oh God, you are out to do. You can only do. We open ourselves for you. We open ourselves for every reality and possibility that is within your word. Father, have your way. We bless you for your word that you have spoken to us in this day. Father, may we move and see results. May we move and see your word being actualized, being manifested, the demonstration of your power in the scriptures. 
the demonstration of every promise that you have made towards us. We bless you for bringing us this far and helping us hear that which you had for us. We honor you, we give you all the glory. And this is our humble prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Just appreciate the Lord. He has spoken to you. Just appreciate him better. I give you.